I want you to hit me as hard as you can. His teen heartthrob status and his intellectual side had the tabloids calling him a smart throb. But did Jonathan Taylor Thomas make a smart move when he decided to walk away from the spotlight? Jonathan Taylor Thomas was so famous that the whole world simply knew him by his initials. J.T.T. Which stands for Jonathan Taylor Thomas. JTT has been called a symbol of purity. He's relatable, but has an obvious destiny for greatness. Everyone thought this cute little cub prince was gonna grow up to be the king of Hollywood. But after conquering the worlds of TV and film, Jonathan Taylor Thomas politely abandoned his kingdom in search for something more. More than just hit sitcoms and blockbuster classics. More than just immortality as a poster on a little girl's bedroom in the 90s. More than anyone could imagine. Child stars come and go all the time, forgotten as soon as their 15 minutes are over. But there seems to be a mysterious intrigue surrounding the enigma that is the life and career of Jonathan Taylor Thomas. He's so normal, it's weird. Hey, life's more than a game. It's an adventure. I'm Jonathan Taylor Thomas asking you to make the right decision right now. Jonathan Taylor Thomas always grabs headlines whenever he emerges from his private habitat. He has gone from teen heartthrob to adult recluse but not in a weird Howard Hughes kind of way, more like a I'm too cool for Hollywood kind of way. And by the way, in case you didn't know, my legal birth name is Taylor James Johnson, in case you don't read the credits at the end. And I, Taylor James Johnson, have a personal confession to make. Jonathan Taylor Thomas is a major reason why I go by all three names. He did it, so why can't I? And being a blonde-haired, blue-eyed white boy in the 90s, a lot of the kids on the playground would call me Jonathan Taylor Thomas for some reason. And still to this day, I am haunted by that tragic backstory. The kids, they would surround me and point their fingers chanting, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. And I'm not sure if they were trying to insult me or, or compliment me. But it doesn't matter because one does not get cooler than Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yo! Yo! <laughs> does he regret walking away from fame? Or has he found happiness elsewhere in life? This and many other JTT related questions will be answered. Questions like this. What the f happened to Jonathan Taylor Thomas? <laughs> but to truly understand what the f happened to Jonathan Taylor Thomas, we must start at the beginning. And the beginning began when he was born on his birthday, 1981, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. But he was not born as JTT, no, it was JTW. His birth name is Jonathan Taylor Weiss. Young Jonathan soon found himself appearing on several commercials for brands such as Kellogg's, Burger King, and Mattel. At nine years old, JTT would graduate to larger roles, appearing as Greg Brady's son, Kevin, in the short-lived Brady Bunch spinoff, The Bradys. And when you think Jonathan Taylor Thomas, you think in living color, right? Well, you should because he appeared in three episodes of the popular sketch show, most notably in a Home Alone spoof involving Michael Jackson. In 1987, Thomas would voice the lead character Spot in the children's animated show, The Adventures of Spot. Nobody f***s with Spot. Then came one of the greatest sitcoms of all time, in the 90s at least, Home Improvement. In 1991, Thomas would land the role that would make him a household name. 
when he was cast as the wise cracking middle child to Tim the Toolman Taylor and his wife Jill. Many, many, many actors auditioned for the role of Randy, but Thomas was cast because the casting people thought he looked like he could be related to Tim Allen. But the best part about this character of Randy is that you can tell that he has a similar sense of humor as his father, even though the two often clash. Tim Allen is always like, Randy, why are you such a wise ass? And he's like, I learned it from you, Dad! The audience could always rely on Jonathan Taylor Thomas to deliver the most perfect, smart alecky line ever. Every time. In every single episode. He got that laugh track working overtime, let me tell ya. Whenever the writers were like, hey, we need something funny to happen here, they were like, how about Jonathan Taylor Thomas makes a wise cracking remark? And they were like, that, that should work. And it always worked. If a guy's walking down the street with his fly down, if I can't come up with a joke, I know you'll back me up. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta make the fly joke. That's right, you gotta make the fly joke. Hey, pal, you know your fly's down? It's cheaper than air conditioning. <laughs> Why do you have your hands behind your backs? Just a little change of pace from keeping them in front, you know. Hey, Mom, you think I have a chance at winning the costume contest? I don't think I have enough brains oozing out of my head. I didn't know you had any brains in your head. But there was some controversial controversy when Thomas left the show in 1998 during the final season. I think he made it like two episodes in. And he had a good reason for leaving. He wanted to focus on his studies, his academics, his education, on his brain, on his thinker, on his noggin. But many people were very confused why someone would leave such a successful show. But education was important to JTT and he wanted to be surrounded by books, not cameras. It was rumored that Tim Allen was very upset at JTT's decision to leave. Tim Allen was like, Who? And yeah, I guess, you know, your education is more important than sitcoms, even if it's like a huge sitcom. I, I mean, like, yeah, it's his, it's his decision. Do what you want, man. How's mom? Mm, not too bad. She finally stopped saying, Boys, whatever you do, don't turn out to be like your father. <laughs> But all the bad blood dissipated over time, and JTT came back to do a reunion photo shoot for Entertainment Weekly in 2011. And like I said, Home Improvement will go down and has gone down as one of the best sitcoms of all time, at least in the 90s. And during its entire eight season run, the show was always in the top 10 of the Nielsen's rating system thing if you care about that Nielsen rating system thing. Slow down, just let me have that thing. Oh, boy. Okay, what's that? Sumo wrestling from Japan. <laughs> Say it. Oh, now that's better. Opera. Ah! Thomas's most high-profile film came by way of the all-time highest-grossing 2D animated film ever made, The Lion King where he provided the voice of young Simba. And this is a wonderful Disney-fied version of Shakespeare's Hamlet. Jonathan Taylor Thomas provides the perfect voice for young Simba. Perfect casting. But he didn't do the singing, but that, that's, that's okay. And this was the first time I ever realized that the voice coming out of the animated animal was a celebrity. A celebrity that I knew. Because I liked Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and I liked lions, and I liked cartoons, and I liked Disney, and this movie was... was all of that. The film pulled in $968.5 million worldwide. And in terms of tickets sold, this film still ranks as the biggest animated movie in the last 50 years, with over 74 million tickets sold. And I know my parents bought quite a few of those tickets. Was it? <laughs> Do it again. Huh? The Lion King received universal praise with Siskel and Ebert, the guys with the thumbs, giving it two thumbs up. Although on the program they did say the film is good, not great. 
But you know what, Siskel and Ebert, it is great, so you're wrong. In 2016, the film was selected for the United States National Film Registry as being culturally and historically and aesthetically significant. And I, I agree, it is significant in all of those categories. Slimy and satisfying. Then in 1994 came Pompoco. Thomas would voice the main character in the North American Disney-released version of this Japanese animated film. You know, for all those people that only watch movies in English. And just like with Simba, he does a fine job bringing this animated character to life, using only the power of his voice. So yeah, 1995 to 1998 was prime JTT years. As his star continued to rise and teenage girls' hearts continued to swoon, Thomas would make the jump from supporting sitcom character to lead actor movie star. He became the man of the house. Speaking of being the man of a house, his next film was titled Man of the House. Thomas would star alongside Chevy Chase and Farrah Fawcett in this live-action Disney comedy about a boy coming to terms with his mom marrying Chevy Chase. And this film was shot while Thomas was on his summer break from home improvement. So he didn't really get a break. Which was very exhausting on the young actor. The film was panned by critics who called it weak. But in 1995, I thought it was great. It had a hilarious comedic moments. I remember JTT making a joke about his pet squirrel named Numbnuts. And right there, that, that was high quality comedy for me in 1995, good old 1995. And it has action. Chevy Chase's character is like chased by the mafia or something and just, you know, like a little side plot. And the politically incorrect tribe of Boy Scouts dressed up as indigenous peoples have to fight off the mobsters or whatever they are. And it was like, wow, yeah, this, this was my cup of tea. And I actually rewatched it recently for research when I was making What the F*** Happened to Chevy Chase. And I clicked on the Disney Plus, and I typed in my cousin's girlfriend's password, and I watched Man of the House, and you know what? I, I still kind of enjoyed it. And many people enjoyed this film, actually. It managed to make $40 million at the domestic box office. Well, if you were really clever, you'd wrap us up in wet rawhide, so when it dried out, it'd mash up all our bones and squeeze our internal organs out through our orifices like a tube of toothpaste. I saw it on America's Most Wanted. Let me tell you something, Sturgis. This kid is sick. Then came 1995, the, the, next, the next following year. Thomas would next play a different Tom, Sawyer, in the Disney-fied retelling of this classic tale, Tom and Huck, opposite the late great Brad Renfro. And these two young men have great chemistry together. This movie right here, Tom and Huck, it really helped me get through a couple book reports back in school. It's like the cliff notes on VHS, you know? But it is a very watered down, but still fun retelling of the Mark Twain classic. And this movie right here at times is pretty dark and scary, at least for a kid in the 90s. And the perfectly politically incorrect villain, Injun Joe, is absolutely terrifying as he hunts down Tom and Huck. Thomas pulled double duty on this film, shooting this and Home Improvement simultaneously, at the same time, back to back, in a row, right after each other. Which must have been very difficult for the young thespian because this Alabama shoot was plagued with many problems, including the intense muggy heat, relentless bugs, and some kind of mulch that apparently made several cast and crew members sick. Horrible weather throughout the production, including tornadoes. And I'm sure the ghost of Mark Twain found all these production troubles to be rather humorous. But listen here, ghost of Mark Twain, not everything's funny. Because of this intense work schedule, Jonathan Taylor Thomas would suffer from severe migraines, 
which is probably one of the many reasons why he slowed down his acting as he turned into a, a grown-up person. JTT even went on to later say that he was heading to an early grave if he would have kept up this pace, acting out entire scenes with full-blown migraine in his head and like he's just a, he's just a child, you guys. But he was still delivering amazing professional performances, so wow, way to go, JTT. So yeah, Tom and Huck, it was planned for a big Christmas release back in 1995, but on its opening weekend it only made it to ninth place at the box office. It would finish its theatrical run with only $23.9 million. Which sounds like a lot if you don't have $23.9 million, but it, it's actually, it's, it's, it's not that much. Critics did not care for Tom or Huck, calling this movie a joyless lump, saying that this Disney version was too scrubbed and polished to resemble the original Mark Twain characters. But I just watched it on Disney Plus, you know, for research, and it's, yeah, I liked it, it's still good. So whatever. Thomas would continue updating classic IPs by appearing as the title character in the movie, The Adventures of Pinocchio. At times, the Jim Hansen effects are pretty spectacular and charming, but at other times, they're very creepy. Like horror movie creepy. I remember seeing this as a kid in the good old 90s and being slightly disappointed. I was hoping for something more fun, you know? But that wooden face, it, it stays with you. It's, it's unforgettable, but not really in a good way. <sighs> It's happened. I finally lost my mind. Sadly, this was another failure in Thomas's filmography as it opened up in the eighth place at the box office and finished its theatrical run with only $15 million against a $25 million budget. Although critics appreciated the visuals of the film, they felt that it lacked the same magic as that, that cartoon version that everybody knows. <laughs> then came the Oz Kids Collection in 1996. Thomas would once again put those skilled vocals to use when he voiced Scarecrow Jr. in the animated children's program The Oz Kids. Thomas would next appear in the 1997 kinda true life story, Wild America. This is the story of three brothers in the 60s who embark across America to capture all the greatest wildlife on camera, and all of whom grow up to become famous wildlife documentarians later on in real life. And I don't give a crap about what anyone says about this movie. To me, this movie right here, Wild America, is perfect. I too was a young, blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white boy who loved nature and filmmaking. So to me, in 1997, movies did not get any better than this. There's action, adventure, animals, explosions, more animals, and fart jokes. Sadly, most every other human did not share my excitement for this movie. They just focused on its flaws. This film was yet another critical and commercial failure for Jonathan Taylor Thomas, and it only made $7.3 million. Roger Ebert, the film critic guy with the thumbs, absolutely hated the inaccuracies and the plot holes involving Mother Nature. It was not wild about wild America. The cave is filled with hibernating bears, in August of course, who wake up. Well, either the bears are hibernating or they're not. Let's say they are. It's supposed to be the middle of summer. When does it get warm enough that they don't need to hibernate? Wild America is a film that means well, and children may enjoy its animal hijinks. The actors are likable, a lot of the photography is good to look at, but it all just plain seemed phony to me, as if they'd taken a nucleus of real events and inflated them into tall tales. Thomas would follow in the footsteps of his TV dad, 
and appear in a Disney Christmas film called I'll Be Home for Christmas. And this is one of those movies that every year, every family gathers around and watches. Actually, no, no, that, that doesn't happen. Nobody watches this. This film was not destined to be a Christmas classic. This was yet another commercial and box office dud, with those pesky critics calling it a Christmas turkey and saying that not one parent or child will find any merriment in this mess. And the box office would agree, this one made $12.2 million on a $30 million budget. Ow! Then in 1999, there was a film called Speedway Junkie, and this was absolutely, completely different than anything Jonathan Taylor Thomas had ever done before. This one was produced by Gus Van Zant. And if you know what that means, you know that this is absolutely not a family-friendly Disney flick. JTT wanted to challenge himself as an artist with darker, edgier material. Sure, why not? But I don't think the world was ready for him to grow up. This film right here was screened in various film festivals, yet failed to find distribution. Until 2001, when it was given a very limited theatrical release. Then it was dumped onto the DVD. Was this the beginning of a dark, grittier, independent stage for JTT's acting career? No, not really. So, uh, you completely straight or what? Steven's bisexual. Guys pay more. Simple fact of life, Johnny. Buy him something and he'll have sex. Thomas's next film would also be, as of today, his final theatrical film a Christian-themed film called Walking Across Egypt in 1999. This was an independently produced endeavor and is said to be a very well-intentioned movie but weakly conceived. Nice try. But yeah, 1999, that was the last time Jonathan Taylor Thomas's face ever appeared on a silver screen. I don't want to go back to that place. He almost had a big comeback in that year, 1999. Thomas was offered the lead role in American Pie, but he turned it down. Disappointing teenage girls and freshly made pies around the world. This could have been a huge comeback for JTT, launching him off into a successful acting career, you know, like Jason Biggs. Or it could have been really awkward to see this young, innocent lad stuck in such R-rated adult situations. I don't know, what do you think about American Pie starring Jonathan Taylor Thomas? Comment your comment in the comments. Well, we'll just tell your mother that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. Thomas would next be seen in the Showtime movie Common Ground, which is an anthology movie with three short stories that all dealt with the theme of homosexuality in America. Thomas would appear in the second story titled Mr. Roberts, playing a student who's afraid to come out of the closet. The year 2000 would see Thomas return to voice acting with The Tangerine Bear, home in time for Christmas as well as Timothy Tweedle, the first Christmas elf, and six episodes as Tyler Tucker in The Wild Thornberries. He would also pop up on an episode of Ally McBeal. At this time, Thomas was enrolled at Harvard University where he was studying philosophy and history, and his acting career took a backseat to his studies. Then, in 2003, after a two-year hiatus to focus on school, Thomas would lend his vocals to The Simpsons. Season 14, episode 18, episode titled, Dude, Where's My Ranch? And between 2002 and 2004, Jonathan Taylor Thomas would appear in two episodes of the CW's popular Superman show, Smallville, playing Ian Randall, a metahuman with the power to duplicate himself. There's so many JTTs everywhere, oh my god! Just add more Jonathan Taylor and you add more Jonathan flavor. That's what I always say. 
Also in 2004, Thomas would appear as the hunky geek Jeremy in three episodes of Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter. Then the next year was 2005, and Jonathan Taylor Thomas's youthful looks landed him a guest spot on Veronica Mars. Jonathan Taylor Thomas could next be seen in a short film. This one was called Tilt a Whirl. Thomas would again lend those silky vocals to the animation world in the Hong Kong produced 3D animated film Through the Mobius Strip. Good. Then let's take care of business. The film premiered at the 2005 Cannes Film Festival where it received generally positive reviews with praise for the animation. Then came the year 2006 with another short film. This one was called The Extra. Jonathan Taylor Thomas would appear alongside the Whose Line Is In Any Way genius Ryan Stiles in a short comedy film about life as a background performer. Then around 2013, proving absolutely no bad blood between Thomas and Tim Allen over his decision to leave Home Improvement, Thomas would appear in four episodes of Allen's other successful sitcom, Last Man Standing, even appearing as Randy in one episode as guest star Patricia Richardson's son. And this reaction right here from Tim Allen is genuine shock as he had no idea that Jonathan Taylor Thomas was going to appear in the scene. Tim Allen was like, Who? Jonathan Taylor Thomas would return as an actual guest star in three more episodes. And he would even step behind the camera to direct a few episodes of the show as well. That's right, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, director. Hi. <laughs> I'm Mike Baxter. Hey. Man, you look familiar. <laughs> And therein lies Jonathan Taylor Thomas's ultimate goal. When he was younger, people would often call him the next Macaulay Culkin. But he would say that he didn't want to be the next Macaulay Culkin. He'd rather be the next Ron Howard, a child star who successfully transitioned into directing. So yeah, we could only hope for the best that Jonathan Taylor Thomas gets more opportunities to bring his directing talents to the screen. I got used to the firecrackers. I had to. They said every good movie needs an explosion. Jonathan Taylor Thomas always seemed to have a firm grasp and understanding of what fame really is. At the age of 14, he said, I think most fallen child stars weren't prepared for the end. I mean, it's not the end of your life. You can't base your whole life around one thing. Those are some wise words, JTT. JTT hated being a heartthrob. JTT hated the magazine covers, and JTT hated being called JTT. Sorry. Even with the public infatuation, Thomas has kept his personal life very private, never really being splashed across the tabloids with any significant others which led to many rumors about JTT's sexuality. And Jay Leno decided to ask him about that one in an incredibly awkward interview. No, I mean, they're, they're rumors, and, and you should always be kind of careful with that internet yeah. stuff. Yeah, but, but are you not, are you gay? No, 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 I don't know. no, 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 I'm, I'm, you know, it's fine. I'm not. You know, if you want to come out, it's fine. No. Ladies and no. gentlemen, we're about to have a dramatic breakthrough. <laughs> Some reports have said that Thomas's mom, who is also his manager, was a bit overbearing and always around, exerting a level of control over him and his career that bordered on unhealthy codependency. While other reports say that she was not around to control him, but to protect him and stay a well-rounded human being who didn't let the fame get to his head. And judging by the person that he grew up to be, I'd say that Jonathan Taylor Thomas was raised right. His parents probably knew of the dark side being a child star in Hollywood, and they were not gonna let their little JTT fall victim to that. And considering that many child stars end up taking that dark and sometimes deadly path, JTT managed to stay out of that mess. 
at least from what we know. After graduating from Harvard in 2002, Jonathan Taylor Thomas returned to school, graduating from Columbia University in 2010, under his original name, Jonathan Taylor Weiss. Rare sightings of Jonathan Taylor Thomas have almost become chupacabra-like. It seems that when he pops up, the world just stops and takes notice. Like in 2013 when TMZ caught him. I can't believe I'm saying this, but let's see what TMZ has to say. Where's that guy? Is that JTT? O-M-F-B-G-13, it's JTT! Who? Jonathan Taylor Thomas is so private with his private personal life that he makes national headlines when he is photographed for the first time in eight years. Just out walking his dog in Los Angeles. But yeah, this guy, all he had to do was go outside and walk his dogs. And that became front page news. Unlike his child star contemporaries, Jonathan Taylor Thomas doesn't have any public social media accounts. So you can't friend him, you can't like him, you can't share him, you can't tweet him, you can't poke him. It's just another way he keeps his private life private. And we should respect that. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to JTT. Jonathan Taylor Thomas in the studio! Here he is! Jonathan Taylor Thomas in the studio this afternoon. Jonathan! How are you? I'm doing good, how Welcome are you? Oh, fine, thank you. Welcome yeah. on to This is Jonathan Taylor Thomas. <laughs> Here he is. Jonathan Taylor Thomas reached a level of fame that is so widespread that 22 years later, just spotting him in public walking his dogs becomes breaking headline news. That right there is ultimate celebrity status. Icon kind of stuff right there, you know? Nobody can take that away from Jonathan Taylor Thomas. His absence from the spotlight just makes the nostalgic craving for some JTT even more intense. He walked away right at the perfect time and never got a chance to ruin his legacy. That's wonderful. He achieved something at the age of 10 years old that over 3 million people currently living in Los Angeles would literally kill for. But achieving that level of fame so young in life can be detrimental to such a young person. So he retreated from the limelight, yearning for a slice of normality. And he got it by attending Harvard University. You know, the way all normal people do. I guess it's an insane thing in today's world of former child stars to not be plastered all over the gossip magazines. But that life was never for Jonathan Taylor Thomas. He's a simple man who wants simple things. And at the ripe old age of 39, he still looks great. Jonathan Taylor Thomas was just photographed in Los Angeles for what seems to be the first time in nearly eight years. And he hasn't exactly strayed too far from the business of show, show business. JTT was actually elected to a board seat of the Screen Actors Guild in 2017, becoming an advocate for the rights of child actors and their money. And perhaps this first public photo of him in eight years is only the beginning of a true Jonathan Taylor Thomas resurgence. Because it definitely seems like even though he hasn't done anything in a long, long time, we still remember the way he made us feel. The laughter, the adventure, the smiles, all that 90s wise ass stuff. Thank you, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Thank you. So nobody should give a fuck about what the fuck happened to Jonathan Taylor Thomas because he's doing just fine. Randy, what can I say? You're definitely one of my sons. <laughs> Thank you for watching our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company and we appreciate all your support.